We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating. And I will say this every week, I have no idea what week we're in for quarantine. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I think I've just stopped What's counting the point? at this point. I feel like we had a countdown and now, yeah, what's the point? I mean, I think there's some pivotal things though. It's going to be interesting because... We're recording this on Sunday, and at least where we are in San Francisco, things are starting to reopen on Monday. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I feel like most things are already sort of reopened. I was in North Beach earlier, and basically all the businesses were booming. I mean, it was yeah curbside only, but still everyone was out. Yeah, I was in the marina in San Francisco this weekend and took a really nice walk. I think the weather here was just beautiful. So hopefully if you're not in San Francisco and you're anywhere else across the world, you were having a good weekend too with weather wise. I think all we got right now is those nice long walks. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a really good opportunity to catch up on some podcasts. So I caught up on our podcast. I definitely really listen to the virtual sex episode because <laughs> it was just so good. I couldn't resist listening again. And then I also caught up on Kind of Dating is another dating podcast. And we're actually on their podcast this week. So definitely check that out too. And a lot of just great episodes about pretty much all things modern dating as well. You know what, Julie, I just noticed you are a little sunburnt. I'm very sunburnt because I was out for five hours. <laughs> is it weird to say I'm excited about that? 
It just <laughs> makes me feel like life is back to normal. <laughs> I know. I kind of actually thought that for a minute. I was like really fatigued <laughs> last night. And I'm like, what is wrong? And I'm like, I think I got sunstroke because I was out so long. <laughs> and I'm like, this is like actually reminds me back to days when I would just go to the beach or go and hang out at parks. And I think the one thing that has been really nice about this is it's reminded us of the simple times a little more. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, you but I feel like when I first moved here, I would always take these long walks and get Mm -hmm. like lost in the city. And I think that's actually really how you fall in love with your city. If you're just taking Uber and Lyft around, like you just don't get to know it the same way. And over the years, I got more comfortable. I got less exploratory because I've lived here now for 10 years in San Mm -hmm. Francisco. And I always remember those days that I would just go and explore a neighborhood or just kind of walk around that came back to me yesterday Mm. and I really enjoyed that and then also just being with friends outside sitting at a park there's something really just at the core of just being with the people that matter to you and we can't forget that either and we can Mm. find ways to make that happen even in this world that's not fully back to 100% normal yeah it is a great a great time to pause and just remind ourselves of the things that we can be grateful for. Because for some reason, people think lockdown, you're literally locked down and can't go anywhere. You can take walks. In fact, it is highly recommended that you take walks. And when you do take walks, you can turn on Datable and catch up on your favorite (laughs) episodes, full circle. And that's a good point. Speaking of walks is to be perfectly honest with everyone. Ever since we went into lockdowns and social distancing and working from home, stats across the board for all podcasts have been super wonky because we realized that most of you probably listen on your commute or listen during like very specific times of the day when you had a routine. But now you're routine is sort of out of whack and everyone's trying to figure out how to make time for their favorite podcast. So here's a suggestion from us, <laughs> as Julie just mentioned, take a walk. That was the last time I listened to one of our episodes too, I, when I took a really long walk all the way from Soma to Knob Hill. For anybody not in San Francisco, that's like basically a mile and a half, but <laughs> to me, it seemed like a very long walk. It was a really nice time to just catch up on everything yeah. digital and audio for me. Definitely when I'm working from home throughout the day, it's hard to carve out time to listen to your favorite podcast. Mm -hmm. I mapped it out. I walked five miles on Saturday. Nice. But I think what else I've been listening to podcasts when I've been doing cleaning and Mm. also when I've been cooking. I think cooking Mm. is a really great time to listen to podcasts. I put like Amazon Alexa on and then I just listen to podcasts and I chop my veggies and whatever. And it's very therapeutic to do it all at the same time. See, I can't listen to podcasts when I'm cooking because I'm such a newbie at cooking that I feel Mm. like I need to fully concentrate. (laughs) But I've noticed taking baths and showers and listening to podcasts is really nice. That's also very soothing. Obviously, don't waste water. So maybe taking a bath is better just so you can just simmer. But I found myself taking longer showers these days just to make it to the end of a podcast. But you made a good point to me earlier, Julie, uh, before we started recording. She's like, you know, you can just pause a podcast and then go back to it later. Okay, yeah. Duh. Yeah, I mean, I did that all the time, even when I was commuting, listening to other people's podcasts, because some of the podcasts I listen to are like two hours long. And I love it. And it's interesting, but I had to get off the bus at some point, And it wasn't anything personal to the podcast. But then I just resumed it when I had a free minute again. And it was perfect. Spotify or Apple Podcasts just easily lets you get back to where you left off. How convenient. So do us a favor. (laughs) If you're listening to this right now, obviously you are because you hear our voices. (laughs) Can you just go on our Instagram and DM us and just say, I'm listening to your podcast during this time. So we know when you're listening. We would love to know. That would be super helpful to us. Yeah. And then, okay, we're going to ask for two more favors and then we'll get into the good (laughs) stuff. So the favor that we asked last week too is we're really looking for more reviews. Reviews help us so, so, so much. And as you know, 2020 was supposed to be so many people's years, including ours, and it kind of COVID-19 threw a train wreck to all of it. But we want to keep bringing this podcast to you. We want to keep growing. So I think favor number one is to literally 
Like open your phone right this minute. It takes one second to leave a rating, a five-star rating if you love what you're hearing. And then if you're so inclined to leave us a nice review, and of course you don't have to leave five stars. We hope you leave five stars, but <laughs> we want to hear honest feedback too. So yeah, it really does help us improve. It helps us bring you the right content. It helps get higher rankings so more people can find us. So it does so, so much. And I know personally, I never leave reviews unless I hate something. So mm -hmm. I know it's just not top of mind for a lot of you. And we totally get that. But we're kind of just asking as a favor to us if you could just take that one second. It's sort of a domino effect for anyone who's not in the podcast business. This is kind of what happens. And this is unfortunately the way it has to be done is once you have all these reviews, then you get ranked in I Apple podcasts and all these podcast rankings. And then they, they get, they prioritize you in the discovery function so that more people can find you. And then the more listens you get, the, the more resources you have as a podcaster, like for Julie and I to get more resources to get to the topics that you guys have been asking for, we need more reviews to get more listens, to get prioritized in the rankings so we have more ammunition to get the resources. Is that crazy or what? But that's the truth, right? Yeah, and then I think the other favor is just tell a friend. I think that's the other fastest way to help grow this is just to tell a friend. And I know a lot of you have done that and you've told us about that and we appreciate it so, so much. And sometimes too, you have a friend that's like, oh, I don't want to hear about dating. I'm already so <laughs> annoyed by dating, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's, you know that this is not your average dating podcast. And we're really here to be a positive enforcement and let people just kind of take in different experiences and perspectives and find what works for them and really just hear what's happening out there. So you're not alone. So I think it could even your friend that might be hesitant, I think just encourage them to maybe listen to your favorite episode. You kind of know your friends best, you know, what's going to be interesting to them. And that could be a good starting point. It doesn't have to be the last episode either. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> just showing our gratitude. There is one more announcement that I did want to make actually before I forget. So if you're not in the love is in the time of Corona Facebook group by Datable, I have been alerted by some people that you have to search for by Datable because there's a few love in the time yeah, of Corona of Facebook groups. Or you can also just go to facebook.com slash group slash Datable. We changed the URL to make it super easy. I recommend getting in now because we are going to do our first ever happy hour, virtual happy hour this, this week. Week. Yeah, on Thursday. So you, if you're listening to this episode, either on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, you still have time to get in. We do, we're going to make them smaller groups and more facilitated because I don't know about you. We've kind of expressed this on some intros before, but it's a little overwhelming just going to a a video call where there's hundreds of people just chatting. So or not even hundreds, but even when it's over five for me, I personally have trouble with it. So we're going to make these more small and intimate. It will have multiple rooms that people can kind of jump around and play different games and ways to get to know different people. So it's going to be exciting. And I'm personally excited to meet some of our listeners from all over the world. And it's a good time to get out of your bubble. Sometimes, you know, we've been living in San Francisco for so long that I forget there's a there's a whole world out there beyond San Francisco. You know what else, too? I We ask people what they miss the most about just life before quarantine. And a lot of people was said just meeting new people. Mm -hmm. And I think even when you're in quarantine, yeah, you might be with a significant other, you might be with roommates, you might be with your parents, or even if you're not or you're alone, you're still like talking to friends on um, virtual means. But it's hard to actually be meeting new people in that mm -hmm. time. And there's a certain energy that you get from just talking to brand new fresh people that you have no baseline with at all. So I think it's going to be a really good opportunity. And especially a lot of you have already been having conversations virtually in the group. So it'll be really fun to put some faces to the names. For sure. 
And let's get into our episode for this week. We've talked about gender roles. We've talked about traditional ways of dating, and then the modern ways of dating. And our guest today has taken matters into her own hands and proposed to her now fiance. This discussion is particularly. Really relevant for all of us today because it's about just taking control of your love life. It does have to do with gender roles, but it it's not really highlighting gender roles. It's just about why wait for things to happen when you can make things happen. It is fascinating because you and I did this whole list of our 2020 dating trends that we thought were gonna. Kind of take on 2020, and we did this right before coronavirus. So we're、right. actually actively refining that list right now, given what we know. But one of them was this increase of women proposing to men. And I don't know about you, Yue, but I've heard of a handful of stories. So when we, when I, I knew Lauren. I actually met her in a storytelling class. So I don't actually know her all that well. But we kind of immediately hit it off and added each other on Facebook. And she's also like an admin in a dating Facebook group. So yeah, I remember her posting her story on Facebook, and I'm like, we have to get her on the podcast. But you also knew a couple people, so we had a few contenders for this story. Yeah, it's a major trend. But it's also it just shows you that people don't give a shit about who's the one proposing anymore. If you're ready to marry the love of your life, then you ask for their hand in marriage.、It、doesn't matter if you're a woman, a man, a child. No, it can't be a child. But you, you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? It's we say it's going to be a trend, and I think in the next couple years it will be more mainstream. But it's definitely not still. And I think what's becoming more mainstream is women making the first move in some of the stuff we've talked about on this podcast. So it'll be interesting to see why that next level of saying "I love you" first or asking for marriage, like those, still feel a little off limits, even with all the change that's been going on. Or maybe now it's time for North America to catch up to Europe. All my European friends are like, "What proposals?" What? Why? What's the、right. point? Why? Why even bother with proposals? You just say, "Let's get married. Cool. Let's do it." <laughs> I mean, I think also just with coronavirus, all the economic downturn that we're gonna have,、mm. I think it's gonna change weddings completely. And also, kind of the other added wrench of this romantic love story we're about to hear is that Lauren did have to cancel her wedding because it was、right. amidst COVID nineteen. So we'll also get into what happened there and how she dealt with that. Okay, let's get to the juicy stuff. Here's Lauren. As modern dating becomes more modern, some of my old school of thought about dating gets thrown out the door, Julie. Because I feel like when we first started the podcast, I was like, "No, men should make the first move. <laughs> men should ask the girl out. Men should propose." And now I feel like anything goes. You know, it's weird because I feel like people are starting to come to terms with women making the first move, like making the first move on dating apps, even asking on the first date. But there's still something like taboo about proposals for whatever reason, and it's. Actually, kind of crazy when you think about it, because this is like the the biggest decision of your life, right? Like, why would you just be like laying passive when you're not passive in any other areas of your life? Do you know why that is? Is because ninety percent of Hollywood movies wouldn't get made if women were the ones doing the proposing. Because if you think about it, all the rom coms, the main storyline is always the woman waiting for the man to propose. Why can't he commit? Why isn't he proposing? <laughs> Did he find a ring? Is the ring that the one that I want?、And And if we're removing that problem, then all these movies would have no fodder. Okay, so I don't know about <laughs> you, but I feel like all of my friends, even the ones that got proposed to, so many of them have like been the one pushing and planting the seed. Like I had a friend that literally took an ad from Tiffany and put it like on the laptop of her significant other, and I'm like, at that point, just、yes. ask. Like that's so passive, right? My friend's <laughs> girlfriend is a graphic designer, and he was at the <laughs> airport one day, and she's like, "Babe, I sent you this this design I made," and he's. Like cool, he opens it. It's it's a ring that she designed. Oh my god! <laughs> But never mentioned it that she wanted it for herself. She was just like, look at this cool design. But anyway, <laughs> what we're trying to say.
say is our guest today, her name's Lauren, is the one who proposed to her now fiance. And I think it's, it's something that I think it's a great way to start off this conversation of changing gender roles, but also just like, why did we have these traditional ways of doing things in the first place? Like nobody ever questioned the why. So Lauren's here with us today. She's 29 years old. She lives in Santa Cruz. She's been there for two years, originally from Danville in California, which is in the East Bay for anybody who's not from NorCal. And she is currently engaged. Hello, Lauren. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being on our show. And thanks for being part of the 5%. Because according to Brides Magazine, only 5% of women in heterosexual relationships have done the proposing. And in a survey done by Glamour Magazine, 70% of men said that they would be psyched if a woman proposed. Well, no shit. (laughs) 70%, I would say 110%. I don't know. But if you look at like old school male gender roles, they could feel like there's something being taken away from them. So I actually think it's surprising that 70% are just totally on board. Yeah, but then they think about the financial upside of a woman proposing. I was saying, and they're like, well, actually, yeah, that sounds pretty I don't care that much about gender roles. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with your, your story, Lauren. So before we get to your proposal, let's hear about how you and your fiance met. So we met on OkCupid, hashtag, thanks OkCupid. (laughs) It's so funny because we both were kind of over dating. Like we had been on a couple of just kind of bad dates and we were just kind of giving up on the idea of like, man, online dating is a little bit weird. And so we were both kind of thinking that we were going to delete our profiles. And then I ended up being like, I'm going to go on one more date before I delete (laughs) OkCupid. And it happened to be... um, Uh, with McCullen and McCullen lives in Santa Cruz. I was living in Danville at the time Mm. and I've all, I love Santa Cruz like to visit. And I was like, okay, well, if the date goes badly, which it probably will, then I will just dip and go to the beach. And so that's going to be great. But if the date goes well and we fall in love and get married, then I can move to Santa Cruz. So I was like, it's a win-win situation. (laughs) I'll drive over the 17. So um, yeah, I drove down and uh, we met to go get sushi. And when I saw him walking across the street, I don't know what it was. I just immediately was like, that's my husband. Like there was just that gut feeling that I was like, that's my husband. Okay, but I and know then, you, you said you just said you don't know what it was, but what was it? Come on. There must have been something. I, think, I just, you know, and it's so funny because I mean, he is tall, but that couldn't have only been it. The first thing I said to him was, "Oh my gosh, you're so tall." Uh that was the first thing I could have thought to say to him. But I just He just had this very warm smile and he was just very sweet. Like when we hugged, he was like, you look great. I'm so excited to meet you. And he just is so sweet and like Mm. very chivalrous. And it was just really nice to meet somebody who you only see pictures of them on the internet. And then you just hope that they're not a troll when you show up. And then like... (laughs) they end up just being gorgeous and sweet and kind and chivalrous. And like, it's basically everything you want out of a dating situation. And it just played out so nicely. And I just knew that he was going to be my last, my last first date. Okay. So you do this when you saw him, but when in the relationship were you like, this is the guy I'm going to marry? Or was it from day one? You really just like believe that? I really felt it from day one, but then of course I convinced myself like, no, crazy people say that. So I <laughs> I need to give it a little bit more time. Um, we went on this really awesome, uh, he's really outdoorsy and adventurous. I am like a true California house cat. I like to stay inside um, and, and just like hang out in my, in my backyard, but I wasn't like a rough in it kind of girl, but he uh, had convinced me that it'd be a good idea for us to go camping. So we ended up going to Salt Point State Park and we just spent the entire time, like I packed like my car full of like a giant fluffy duvet, like things that you don't take camping. But I was like, at least we'll be cozy in the tent. And he just kind of rolled with my punches and like, just was really like, oh, this is so great that you brought this, even though it's like not the experience that he usually has when he was camping. Mm. Or like, I was like, I brought us 
sun-dried tomatoes to put in our omelet that we're going to cook over the campfire. And he was like, oh, geez. But he's still, you know. <laughs> he's like, and I brought the avocado toast. What? Who yeah, are exactly, you? <laughs> exactly. And, but it was so great because we spent the entire time just hanging out at camp, like really talking about our values and what we really appreciate about life and about, you know, the ways that we grew up and our family and friends. And it just seemed like our values were so perfectly aligned. We're mm. very different personality wise. He's very, very introverted and I'm very, very extroverted. And we grew up in very different worlds, but our values were like so perfectly intertwined mm. that I was like, I don't see this happening with anybody else. I've never had this experience where someone just gets me right mm -hmm. off the bat. And yeah, to this date, like we've never had a fight except for when we're hungry. Um, <laughs> and that's, you know, we're just very harmonious couple. And when did you guys start having conversations about marriage? It was never something that we sat down and were like, okay, let's talk about marriage. It was just sort of one of those things where, you know, you see on Facebook that all your friends are getting engaged and you start being like, oh, that's very interesting. My childhood friend who has been with her boyfriend for one year just got engaged. That's very interesting since we've been together for two years. And like, so these things would keep coming up. And, and I started just thinking about when would be the right time to take the next step. I guess I dropped a lot of hints, like that I wanted to get married. We eventually did have a conversation that just came up like very casually over lunch or dinner or something. And I just was like, I could definitely see myself marrying you. And he agreed. But then I was like, yeah, so just like whenever you're ready. <laughs> and I literally just left it at that. You put the ball in his court. Yeah. So UA knows this, but I just love those timelines. So if we're going <laughs> to <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> I just like to get a well-rounded verse of the story. So your camping trip, how far into your relationship was this like pivotal moment for you? Let's hold that thought for a second. We'll get right back to it. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little tea? THC could also do that. Yes, Vaya has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Vaya also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at viahemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl, and I have that in common, she's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step -step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that hey, he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash dateable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. 
The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.com style slash datable. That is armoire.style spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try armoire today. How far into your relationship was this like pivotal moment for you? Um, we have been dating for about like about a month okay. when I just realized that I was like, this is like, he's like the one, like I, I wow, realized okay. it very, very early. And I think he felt it too. We said, I love you extremely early in the relationship. Like we both kind of felt like maybe we were jumping the gun a little bit, but it's just extremely right. early. Literally it was, we went on the camping trip and then the next week, uh, we both were just overlooking a sunset over in Santa Cruz. And I was like, I would really like to say some words. If you have words that you would also like to say. (laughs) Wow, passive. (laughs) I know. Eventually, eventually he was like, yeah, it would be cool if someone would say those words. And then we, and then finally he broke and he was like, all right, well, I love you. I "I love you too. That's cute. (laughs) So it was, so we said, I love you really early in the relationship. You know, it was a month and a half. I usually like to take a little bit more time with that kind of stuff because I think that real true love really builds over time and with you understanding each other's little quirks and at that point we were still really getting to know each other but I just felt like his core being was just so good that why wouldn't I love him just right off from the start he right. showed me who he really truly is and I I don't know I'm sold mm-hmm. <laughs> so at what point did you decide I'm going to do the proposing. Okay, so after a really long time of dropping hints, we had also discussed a little bit of timelines because I did want to be conscious of a couple of different things that were going on in just our perspective lives. So for example, McCullen uh, needed to finish school. He's actually currently in school right now to become a radiology tech. So right now is super, super committed to school stuff. And I didn't want to put too much pressure on him to like down payment on a very shiny object for me Mm. when he's like (laughs) trying to pay rent and like pay his way through school. And I was also, you know, I had just moved down to Santa Cruz. We were really just building our roots and building our home up. And so when I started to really think about it, I was like, I don't see a world where McCullen will propose to me just simply because of where we're at in our life and the pressure that men have to feel when they have all of these things going on. And now there is this added pressure to buy expensive jewelry, which Mm. by the way, has its own crazy history to it. Like the De Beers Diamond Corporation created a marketing campaign that said that you need three months salary for a ring. Like that was a made up rule that they decided what was going to be the new standard. And now every man ever since then, because of the De Beers Diamond Corporation, (laughs) feels like they have to make all of these sacrifices that it's the thing that women want more than anything in the world. And when I really sat down and thought about it, I was like, this is a really huge investment that McCullen feels uncomfortable making right now because he would rather plan for our future. And what do I really want out of this? Mm. What I really want is a husband and a partner and it's like teamwork. And it's not really about getting a ring or a giant, you know, dazzling proposal for me. It is really just saying the words that you want to commit your life to being someone's teammate. And I was thinking about that more and more. And then I listened to an interview with Senator Elizabeth Warren. And Elizabeth Warren proposed to her husband. Oh, no way. 
Yeah, they were, and and very casually, like he was teaching a class, and she was like, "You did great. You were so amazing up there, so amazing that I want to marry you. So let's get married." And it was literally just that. And when I heard about what she had done, I was like, "That is the chillest, coolest thing I've ever heard in my entire life." And why couldn't I just do that?、Mm. And like. Take out the middleman and like not have to put down a whole bunch of money for a ring and not. I've never waited around my whole life for a man to tell me what to do. So why would I do that now? And I just went for it and I and I started planning. He had no idea. Uh, he was、wow. very surprised. <laughs> when so you、I、guys didn't have like you. I know you had that like one conversation about like you could see each other being married, but there was no like build up to this at all. You were just kind of like, I'm just gonna run with it. Yeah, we had that like very casual conversation, and it was a lot of me dropping hints, and then me also seeing the uncomfortable look in his eyes when he would look at the price of of rings.、Mm, um, yeah, and I was like. I can't do that to him because that's not what this is about for me. What this is about is having a love that that is going to last, and I don't want to put unneeded pressure there. So I'm going to take the pressure off, and that's going to get us off on like the right foot. It just kind of came out of nowhere, really. <laughs> I just googled Elizabeth Warren proposal, and all these tax proposals came <laughs> up. But a great Vanity Fair article showed up, and the title is "Elizabeth Warren proposed to her husband because that's how she rolls." Love it. When was this? Like, because I'm trying to think. Like, because we were UA and I put together like a list of our top 2020 dating predictions. Of course, this was pre-coronavirus. We're refining this list now of what happens after. But one of them was increase in women proposing. So、mm-hmm. I'm curious. I mean, Elizabeth Warren, I'm assuming, was a while ago, right? Do you know the date? Over thirty years ago. Yeah, and I mean, like, I guess in <laughs> Sex in the City, I'm thinking about that. They had Miranda propose, so it's not like this hasn't been around. But I feel like it is gaining more and more traction in these like recent years. Like it could become more mainstream. I'm gonna guess in the next ten years. I think、exactly. so too. I, I think there's a lot of pressure right now on men to kind of make this first move, but with apps like Bumble that are out there and other sorts of ways of an Initiating conversation and initiating getting what you want. Like we're being told finally that women can get what they want, and all you have to do is ask for it. And I don't see why that should be any different from you know in your career to in your relationship.、Um, if you want something, you got to ask for、right. it. And like, why just beat around the bush and drop hints and make everybody uncomfortable? You mean like printing <laughs> out like a, a fake <laughs> ring or ripping an ad out of a magazine? You think that's not subtle? <laughs> Or buying Facebook ads and、right. only targeting him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to my timeline question. This is like what, like two years in? Like how? Where are you in your relationship at this point? Yeah, so we were about let's see, two and a half, three.、Uh, I'm like, how long have we been together? Because we've been together almost four years. Okay,、um, this summer. So we were about. Yeah, we were about two and a half years in when I decided that I was going to propose. And living together at that point in Santa yes, Cruz. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had been living together、uh, for about a little bit less than a year, but it had been going so great. Like it was. It's the most harmonious living situation. We live in 400 square feet, and we still haven't like killed each other through this、uh, quarantine. So wow, that's true love. That's an <laughs> ultimate test. Yeah, <laughs> that's true love, or just a lot of alcohol、uh, to、yes. numb the feelings. <laughs> But Lauren, everyone wants to know right now: How did the proposal go down? Yeah, I I love the story. So we so my fiance is super super into、um, endurance bike packing and endurance mountain biking, and he wanted to do the Arizona Trail race. So we met up in Sedona, beautiful beautiful place. Like there's nothing like it. It's just the red rocks and. It just floored me the first time I went there. I'm like, this is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. This is exactly where I want to propose. So I had like a little、uh, silicone ring that was like the makeshift thing because I was <laughs> like, he's a biker. He doesn't need a metal ring. So I had it in my pocket and I was. 
driving there about like 16 hours, driving down, being like, I'm going to propose. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to chicken out. And then um, I met with him down there and we had a great time and we decided that we were going to go on a hike. He had actually found out from one of his friends who he had been biking with about this wonderful trail. Um, and he's like, oh, it has the most beautiful view of the entire valley. You've got all the red rocks in the background, but then all this lush greenery and usually there's no people up there. And I was like, great. Yes, absolutely. Let's go on that hike. Um, so I didn't even plan it, but it sounded so beautiful that I was like, that's where I'm going to do it. That's, that's what we're going to do. Funny thing is the morning that I was planning on popping the question and right before we decided to go on that hike, I started having issues with my heart. What I thought was a heart attack was just anxiety because I was so scared to put myself out there like this. Like, you know, when your yeah. entire life, you have this dream that like your Prince Charming is going to get down on one knee for you. And then you decide I'm not going to even give myself the option of having that. That's a pretty nerve wracking experience. I kept having all these thoughts in my head, not that he was going to say no, because I knew he would say yes. But I, I had all these feelings like, am I going to regret not giving myself the traditional proposal mm. experience? And I started to get really nervous about that. I ended up having a bunch of issues with my heart. So I was like, I have to go to the hospital. So I went to the ER. They checked my heart. They're like, everything is fine, but you're probably having uh, some sort of an anxiety oh my attack. God. Like, what, what are you anxious about? And I told the nurse, um, my Holy cow. fiance this obviously is, was around. This is a rom-com. Wait, was this com? in Sedona that you had to go? This is in Sedona. Oh my God. The morning of, this is the morning of my proposal. And then I turned to the nurse and I was like, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm planning on proposing to my fiance. And she was like, girl, get out of here. Go get your man. <laughs> we'll get your we'll get your proposal. Like, I hope you have good health care, girl. You shouldn't have come to the ER. Um, and then so I get out of the emergency room. McCullen is like, so do you still want to go on that hike? I'm like, yes, I feel great. Let's, uh, let's leave the ER and go on this hike. When we were um, hiking up the mountain, I had this little gem from one of those hippy dippy gem shops where they tell you that the crystals are going to absorb like bad energies out of your body. Those are all over Sedona. Oh and yeah. I oh had, yeah. I have so many. And I ha <laughs> they're the best. And I had this little, um, you know, turquoise rock and I had it in my hand the entire time. I was scrambling up this very rocky, when they said that there was a trail to the top of this mountain, the word trail was very rough. Um, <laughs> and the terrain was not easy. So it was me scrambling over a whole bunch of rocks and basically rock climbing while holding this little like turquoise crystal thing. And <laughs> McCullen's like, why do you have that in your hand? I'm like, I don't know. I just need it. <laughs> he was like, you are, he's like, you, you are acting so weird. And we finally get to the top of the mountain. I, it is the most beautiful view I've ever seen in my entire life. There's like all these beautiful forests beneath us and there's no people up there. So we literally have all the space to ourselves. but the skies were getting really, really gray. And I was really worried that it was going to start raining on us and desert rain is very heavy. So I was really nervous. So we're up at the top of this mountain. We're just hanging out. And then I put my little anxiety rock down and <laughs> I take him over to like the edge of precipice and I'd like take his hands. And then I just was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And so I, I look in his eyes and then I'm like, I was going to say something, but I forgot. Haha. <laughs> he was like, uh, okay, whatever. And then I like turned to walk away and I was like, this was a dumb idea. I don't know why I thought I could do this. And then it started thundering like not even just like a little bit of thunder it was like thundering all around me but there was no rain and I was like oh okay it's gonna start dumping on us and I'm taking this as a sign from the universe that I need to just do it like I just <laughs> need to do it so I went up to him and I said okay I have to ask you a very important question and I know that we've talked about it a lot but I love you more than anything in the whole world. You are the only person I could possibly see myself building a life with. You're my family. And I know it's going to sound really cheesy, but do you want to hang out with me every single day until Aww. we're dead? <laughs> and so and he was like, wait, what? And then I got, and then I got down on one knee. Oh, and I you asked did him it. If he wanted to get, yeah. And I got down on one knee and I had my little ring and he was 
shocked, but he also had the biggest smile on his face. Oh, it was so precious. Of course. Oh. And he was and he was so happy and like and it was so sweet, but then our entire time trying to go down this mountain, he was just completely silent. And I didn't know if it was because I had done something wrong. And so when we got to the bottom, I was like, I'm sorry, did I just take away like an experience from you? And he was like, no, no, you didn't. Like, I'm just shocked that you did it. I, this is, this is really cool. Like, this is really cool. I just wasn't expecting it. And then he told me, he was like, I was also especially not expecting it because I have my mom's ring and I was going to propose to you like next week. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> holy cow well that's when you know you're on the same page exactly and I was like oh and so now I I'm rocking his mom's ring um, and so that's very sweet um and very meaningful but yeah it's just so funny I was like we've been on the same page this whole time but yeah he definitely was not expecting me to to pop the question because of just how little I had talked about it but you know when you want something you just go out and you just go get it I and love I wanted, that story. And I wanted him, so I got him. <laughs> I love that he was planning it too at the same time. That's so yeah. great. <laughs> that is so sweet. So we had oh. a couple on our show, Brian and Chakara. Their story, so he proposed to her. It was very elaborate. But he, when he proposed, he also gave her a ring to propose to him. So they did a mutual proposal. Yeah. And Aww. maybe this whole, now I'm rethinking, maybe the trend is not so much women proposing yeah. as a mainstream, but maybe this mutual proposal. I love, I love the mutual, because that's like all about equal partnership, which is really mm -hmm. what we all want. I think what you said, Lauren, really hit a chord with me that it's like so many men, I've witnessed like friends, significant others and male friends feeling this way too it is all about like the pressure of the ring and like purchasing it and doing all that but at the end of the day like that is not what marriage is about at all so mm -hmm. I think that part about like what is it that I really want out of a marriage and if that's what's holding us back like it's kind of silly when you think about it yeah absolutely and what's so funny is that like I think he had felt all of this pressure to get me something shiny and new because that's what we're advertised every single time and it's there had been people out out there being like oh it's tacky to give people hand-me-downs but I love his mother's ring he didn't spend a dime on it it looks fantastic I'm super super happy with it but if he never gave me this ring I would still be so excited to be engaged to him it's about so much more I think it comes down to like knowing your partner too because there are some mm -hmm. women that really do want the shiny ring right I'm not saying yeah. that like they shouldn't get that and that's like I think a discussion that also needs to happen like do you feel like you guys always had this feeling like this these conversations about like men and women equality also because I feel like that is another piece that this could go amazingly well or horribly wrong depending on just people's worldviews also absolutely and I mean McCollin's always known that I'm a super feminist and I believe so wholeheartedly in an equal partnership in our household it's very much one of those things where it's like I do the cooking, you do the cleaning, like we do things together. And I tell him every single day that he's my favorite teammate, because mm. I really do feel like that is what marriage is for me specifically is it's just, you know, we treat each other as equals. We always take the other person's feelings into consideration. We have compassion and we work together on everything. And because that's just the value that I build all of my relationships on, not even just my romantic relationship, but you know, my friendships work that way too. I think it was one of those things where me proposing and kind of taking that step, it didn't feel like I was taking anything away from him because we're not people that are particularly tied to patriarchal tradition. It's just not really something that either of us are super down for. Some people really like those traditions and that's okay. Right. That's okay if the guy really wants to propose and, and plan a really elaborate thing. I'm totally not knocking anyone who wants to have that be their experience, but it's also nice to know that there are other options out there and it can just, you know, be fluid for each couple's, you know, values and needs. You know, part of this discussion makes me think, why is it that we're so hung up on the man proposing? And why is it so exciting when the man proposes? Right. And I really think it's because, this is so sad to, to think about, I just had this epiphany, that we spend our lives trying to live other people's narratives 
if you think mm-hmm. about it. It's like, ooh, this narrative of the man proposing with this shiny ring, it gets the girl so excited so she can share with her friends and her family over social media. That's a narrative that yep. a lot of people want to live. Mm-hmm. And the narrative that you are living, Lauren, is a narrative that's not very much like it's not championed at all. We don't hear that so much. So if we keep saying this narrative, then maybe it gets that excitement building because mm-hmm. we just like people just haven't lived it yet. And that's kind of like where I really feel this discussion going is that whenever you feel compelled to feel a certain way or want something, step back and think about like, why is it that I want this? Is it for myself or just to live in someone else's shoes and feel their excitement? Yeah. So I'm trying to think too, like why some women are jumping on this trend where some are just still like really wanting things to play out the more traditional way. Hey, let's take a quick break so we can all do a mental health check-in. In In these unprecedented times, some of us may be experiencing unprecedented feelings. For me, it has been feelings of helplessness and uncontrollable anxiousness. So I want to know, how are you feeling today? You know, working on my mental health with our wonderful sponsor, BetterHelp, has ensured me that I'm not alone in this. BetterHelp offers online counseling with professional, credible, and compassionate therapists in a safe and private environment. Their counselors specialize in depression, relationships, trauma, and many other areas. With 3,000 U.S. licensed professionals across all 50 states, they make it easier than ever to find help. And it doesn't have to be expensive like what you think therapy would be. And they even offer financial assistance. Now for Dateable listeners only, you get 10% off your first month with a code Dateable. Get started today by going to betterhelp.com slash Dateable. Simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs and get matched with a suitable counselor. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash Dateable and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E for 10% off your first month. Now back to this episode. So I'm trying to think too, like why some women are jumping on this trend where some are just still like really wanting things to play out the more traditional way. Because I can think of like including you, probably like four or five other people I know of that have proposed to their husbands or fiancés in like the last year. And I would say before that, I don't know if it's a combination of just getting older or the times changing, but before that I could probably count zero. So I think things are moving in this direction, but I think there's always been this feeling, I hate saying this, like it's kind of the same logic of like not saying I love you first. Like for whatever yeah. reason, it's like as women, we want to feel like men are really devoted and they care about us and they are the ones that like... Like that, they picked us. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. they picked us. And I feel like sometimes when we make the moves, it's like almost like admitting defeat. And I think that's like mental model that's a lot of women have. How do we kind of like overcome that and go to more of like what you're saying is no, like it's not saying anything about our relationship. Like, like I'm confident in our relationship and it's more about us being equal partners. Yeah, that's a really good point. And and it is very interesting that idea of like wanting a man to pick us because that's exactly what was going through my head when I was basically playing chicken trying to get McCullen to say that he loved me first even though we felt it at the exact same time when we were super early in our relationship. I think it just comes with like women need to understand that they have power and agency over their own thoughts and minds and narratives. And if you want your life to look a certain way, then make it so, but you really have to look inside yourself and figure out why you want it. Is it because everyone else is doing that thing? Or is it because you want a love that's like, you know, what your parents had and it was so sweet and your dad was really romantic with your mom. Like everyone has a reason for why they kind of feel the way that they feel about things. I grew up on Disney movies, like Mm -hmm. just always wanting to be swept off my feet, always wanting to be kissed, but never thinking about me being the one doing the kissing. Right. That's fascinating, especially as a person who is very in charge of my own body and autonomy and sexuality in my adult years. But I spent most of my most formative years being a very passive person. And now we're kind of in this generational shift where women are less and less passive and more just going out and like being badass and getting shit done and 
and really just running their own lives and, you know, not waiting for other people to tell them how it's going to be. And I think when you take that attitude and you start applying it to your relationships, I mean, it is something that you have to have a lot of communication around. But if you are truly going to spend the rest of your life with someone who shares your value system, then asking them if that would be something that they're open to. Like, what if I proposed to you? I would love to see what guys have to say. Apparently 70% of them would be so excited. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, According like, to Glamour Magazine. But women, but women aren't even asking the question because they already have it in their minds that, oh no, he wouldn't like that. Yeah. Like he wouldn't want that masculinity taken away from him. And I'm like, oh, maybe he would. I don't know. Like you should talk about it. You know, for me, I'm super conflicted about this. I'll be super honest with you guys because I think as an elder millennial, it's it's hard for me to shake off some of these traditional wants right. and gender roles. From a third party, it's really easy for me to be like, yeah, go girl, go get it. You're in control of your life. You go get your man. But then when I step back into my body and I think, well, actually, I personally still want the proposal. The wedding right. thing, I couldn't give a shit about. Proposal, I want. And I, I've thought about this over and over again. Why is it that I want that? And it's really because I don't think it's so much... To me, it's not symbolic of the man choosing me. It's symbolic of a man wanting to make me happy mm, and yes. wanting to make me happy in a grand gesture. Mm. And to me, it's like, uh, I think by him proposing to me, it shows that he wants to make me happy for the rest of my life. And that's why it's important to me. And I, it's really hard for me to let that go. As much as I love to step back and say, yes, I can do the proposing, I think I just that's a non-negotiable for me. Yeah, I think that that's totally valid. It's so interesting because when I posed and I shared my proposal story on like various wedding groups that I had uh, joined, I got very, very um, mixed responses. Most people were like, oh, that's amazing. Like, that's so incredible. That's so cool that you did that. But like, not a lot of people said, oh, I also did that. Like, it was mostly just people, what you're saying, being like, yeah, go girl. That's awesome. Mm. Because it was like something that was very personal to me and they were happy for me, but that might not just be something that they want to do because maybe a proposal means different things to them. I don't think that people who uh, really want their male partner to propose to them, I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. There are some amazing proposals out there and I watch them unabashedly all the time. So <laughs> even though even though I am the most like, I took my proposal extremely casually, like literally just drove to a town I had never been to with a ring being like, we'll see where we end up and we'll see how it goes. Like I didn't really plan mine at all. When I see the level of planning that people put into their proposals, I am floored, shocked, amazed, and delighted. Like, yeah. I, and, and if people want that sort of grand gesture, there is nothing wrong with that because it's also really cool that someone would put that yeah. much effort into into showing how much they care and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that either also girls can plan those big grand gestures if they want to but Absolutely. every single person is different everyone is different you know what I'm I totally agree with you I think it really comes down to like whoever you're with having those conversations and understanding yeah. what your values are like I'm personally like I'm kind of on the camp like I do want to get married because I want a partnership with someone for life but I don't really care about a proposal I don't want a wedding like I'd rather elope with someone like I'm just not that type of person and I think what I'm really digging is like this joint proposal idea yes. because I think it really aligns with my values of like I don't need to be surprised. Like, I want to be having these conversations, like building up to it already, that we're already on the same page and we're doing this. It's, yeah, to each their own. There's not like one right way. There's not the woman should do it, the man should do it. It should be joint. I think it's really just like a conversation that needs to happen between partners. Absolutely. I think the red flag should be raised when you are waiting. Yes. And you're, you're, yeah. you're, desperately waiting for that ring and proposal. That is a problem because then you're being passive and you're being aggressive. I <laughs> at the hate same time. I actually, I think like, I don't want to like ding any of my friends that did this, but it actually just like 
kind of bothers me, these like really passive aggressive ones that we talked about earlier, because their whole premise is like, I need him to do it. Is he really doing it from a place of like he wants to when you're like constantly pressuring? I just right. feel like it's kind of like counter. It's like it's you're telling yourself a story that this person did this and like had this grand gesture and made this whole proposal. But did they really? Like, would they have done it if you weren't doing all of these like sneaky things on there? So yeah. yeah. If if they're doing it at gunpoint, is it really love? <laughs> right. Like, I mean, at that right. or it's not even love, but like at that point, like, should you just do it? Like, is there really a mm-hmm. difference? Like, are you re- like I think there's a narrative that they're like they can still tell like their friends that their guy proposed to them. But oh, that's absolutely. really all it is, right? A narrative. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is how we have these conversations. I just remember when my parents came and visited, we were at dinner and my mom looked at my boyfriend straight up and was like, when are you guys getting married? And I was like, wait, why is it his decision when we get married? And I also had a girlfriend over the other day too. And she also said the same thing to him. She was like, UA is not getting any older. And I'm like, wait, but why is, that's a lot of pressure on a man. To, yeah. to make him feel like he's the one deciding if you two are getting married or not. It should be a joint decision. So we need to change the conversations around this yes, as well. Absolutely. It has to be a two-way street. Otherwise, it's just, it's not cohesive. Yeah. Then it just becomes very transactional. Right. <laughs> yeah. I pick you. Now you're mine. <laughs> I was going to say another fun twist of your story yes. here is that you have this great proposal everything is well he's excited and you're planning your wedding and then COVID-19 hits yes <laughs> COVID <laughs> so what yeah. happened <laughs> oh gosh okay well we were supposed to get married on um June 14th so like a little bit over a month from now But I knew when I first heard that COVID stuff was happening way back when I was like, I'm not getting married this year. I'm not, I can't do it. Like I can't, I can't have a wedding because for one, I moved my wedding date up. I originally wanted to have a long engagement because I was like, yeah, what's another year? What's another few months? But my grandma is 94 years old and my mom has early stage dementia and I just really wanted them to be as present Mm. as possible for my wedding. But when COVID happened, I was like, oh, nobody is coming for this wedding and nobody is going to be able to fly out here and I have no choice. So I guess I am getting that long engagement overall. (laughs) So um, luckily, I was really smart in my wedding planning process. I hired all of my friends to be my vendors. So logistically, everything worked out fine and my guests all, you know, understood and it really kind of went off without a hitch for me. But there are so many Corona brides out there that are just struggling. And it like really breaks my heart because I'm in all these wedding groups and I see all of these women who are just broken up about the fact that they can't have their wedding this year. And I kind of, just for me personally, um, I think that, you know, it is totally valid to grieve over the loss of getting to celebrate your love with with Mm -hmm. your best friend. I think that that is a very, very valid thing to grieve. But for me, I was like, I don't think that I need to necessarily grieve it happening this year because I'm literally signing up to spend the rest of my life with McCullen. So I have the rest of my life to have a big party with food and, you know, symbols of love exchanged. And what I have to do now is without being legally a wife, um, I have to use this next year, especially as we're dealing with the uh, shelter in place laws. I'm like, this is the test run for being a wife, (laughs) taking care of your partner through the hardest shit that you will go through. And this is, this is what marriage is all about, really. Without having the wedding, I already feel like I have just entered into marriage. <laughs> and, um, and we'll just have a really awesome party next year. Yeah. And that's great. I mean, I definitely see that perspective. It's like, okay, it's unfortunate, right? And I think it's tough when you like feel like 
something's happening in a month and then you realize like it's not and we don't really know when it can actually happen again but to your Mm -hmm. point also it's like you are signing up for a life together like what is another six months another year in the scheme of things I guess though do did people in the group did they like not get money back because I could see that being like a big hardship it's it's really dependent on people's vendors and where they are in the country. There are definitely some people that are not able to get their money back or they were working with vendors who are being really irresponsible about their refund policies. That's why I always, always, always suggest to people who are planning their weddings, whether you're in the middle of a global pandemic or not, is always get stuff in writing. Always make sure that that section has a clause for if any sort of unforeseen circumstances mm like wildfires or, you know, disease or anything like that, that couldn't have been foreseen is going to impact, make sure that there is a clause in there that you are going to get your money back, or at least that you're able to get your money transferred. Right. Heartbreaking stuff. Like I really feel for those brides and grooms out there. I do wonder that with so many complexities and headaches of weddings, that the future of weddings will just be much simpler. (laughs) I've seen a few of these Zoom weddings happen. It just seems so drama free. It's just two people in front of their computer and boom. I mean, that's the flip side of it is like, yeah, you could just wait like you are doing and just say like, okay, we can wait another year, whatever it may be. But the other side is... I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm maybe the wrong person to ask because I'm, I've never really been excited about a big wedding anyways. But I guess the flip side of it is, is like, we're so in love anyways. Like, let's just do this. Like, who cares about the party? Who cares about the exactly. celebration? So again, it's to each their own. I don't want to say like one is better than the other because I think a lot of it just comes down to personal preference. But even like before COVID-19, another trend that UA and I had on our list was just changing weddings because I feel like more and more people are saying like fuck all these expensive (laughs) like I don't want to pay a year's salary for a wedding like one night Mm -hmm. right like let's do this in a different way that's maybe either smaller or we elope or it's like like I had a friend that did like literally immediate family and a dinner after like there's just all sorts of weddings that are happening this day and age absolutely and the the big piece of advice I give to people is if that's what you want make sure that your family does not get involved because you will not have that it's it's one of those things where like I totally agree I think that people especially now they're doing these drive-by weddings where like literally they stand in a park and their friends are just in their car watching them get married and for them it isn't really so much about the pageantry of it weddings are really cool and pretty and fun I'm really looking forward to mine but oh man, I would just love to have had a celebration in a restaurant and then just go to my honeymoon right after. But I had so many other people like, you know, putting pressure on like, you're our only daughter. Like, we really (laughs) want to be there to celebrate you. And then I felt like I had to start pleasing other people. And then I was like, this is not in the spirit of why I proposed to McCullen. I proposed to McCullen because this is what I wanted to do. Now I'm doing all the things that other people want me to do. So by the time this whole Corona situation calms down and we do eventually have our wedding, it's going to be full of a lot of things that are going to shock my family. Like (laughs) the traditions that I'm shirking. The fact that we will not have uh, chair covers because why, why Why would I have chair covers? (laughs) Like there's no point and I'm totally excited to just cut costs and just cut stress where I can. Like simplicity and minimalism is like the, is the trending thing. We got to con Mari, our, our freaking wedding industry, (laughs) what we need to do. (laughs) This does not bring me joy. (laughs) Does the chair cover bring me joy? It does not. (laughs) But this is a great way to kick off some takeaways because what I'm hearing from you, Lauren, is you've basically gone into this buffet of traditions and you picked and chose what you like. 
and threw away the ones that you don't like. And I think that's how we should look at life and look at love and look、mm-hmm. at relationships. Is that we have all these traditions that have people have done in the past, and then we have all these new experiences that are popping up. And it's your life, so you're in control of saying, "I like this. I'll take a little bit of this from the old traditions, and I'll take a little bit of this from the new stuff." And what I really love from this wedding I went to like years ago was this couple during their vows said. We both come from very different cultural backgrounds with different traditions, and we're really excited to create new traditions together. And I thought、yes. that was beautiful because that's what two people should do in a in a relationship. So to me, I've come to terms with the fact that I I pick and choose. Like for example, the traditions that I want to keep are the proposal, yes, but. The dress does like when I watch say yes to the dress, it does nothing for me. Yeah, I'm like、uh, shutting that off. It does not interest me.、Uh, also, public proposals like in a ballpark or whatever, like in front of a thousand people, that、yeah. doesn't interest me. For some people, that excites、yeah. them. That's not something I want. It's like you do you. Yeah, and, and and you choose what is it that you want to keep and what are the new experiences you want to bring in. Yeah, I think for me, the takeaway I have is, I mean, we talk about this through everything. Is like our relationship is all about communication. Ultimately, this is another conversation that happens of what they want in life. Like that's something we're already having these conversations. Like, do we want to be married? How do we feel about marriage? All of that. And if we're not having these conversations, like let's have these even more because it's just a way that you can kind of reframe what traditions exist and then. Learn with your partner, like what works for them, what works for you, and like how are we gonna like make this work for us? And、mm-hmm. I think like what you a you had certain ones that you want to like keep. For me, I have different ones, right? Like how would anyone know that if you didn't have a conversation? Like no one can be a mind reader of like which. Traditions people want to preserve and which ones others don't, and I think it's really just like there's no shame in just having it be an open thing. It doesn't mean that someone loves you any more or less. Like if they're not like doing all these grand gestures that you may or may not even care if you really have in the scheme of your love life.、Mm-hmm. Any takeaways from you, Lauren? You've given us so many, but any new ones? No, I think that definitely you guys hit the nail on the head with so much, and and it's been really interesting to. Think about in the span of just like my love life journey, how much other people's expectations really came into play in so many of the pivotal milestones of、yes. my love story. And I picked one that I just was willing to sacrifice and kind of flip the script on it. But there are going to be so many other milestones in my marriage that I'm going to have to contend with what the world wants from me and、mm-hmm. what the world wants from my relationship, or not even what the world wants from my relationship. No one actually really cares, but <laughs> it matters. But I have expectations for myself, and、mm-hmm. I need to be the one to work with my partner and communicate. On what those are going to be, and I think that that's the best advice that anyone can take into their marriage is thinking some tradition is great if that's something that is meaningful to you, but if it's not, you can get rid of it and you can make new traditions, and you don't have to do the things just because everyone else has done them or because other people want you to do them. You get to have a buffet at your life and decide what you want on your plate. Absolutely. I think the other like final one I have is just we've said this before. It's like taking control of your love life. Like why、yeah. would we sit passively for anything? Like I mean, I think like we are just all starting to ease into more and more gender traditions breaking. Like I think it's becoming like. Like we mentioned with Bumble, it's you have to make the first move as a woman, and I think it is breaking down the barriers on other dating apps too. And I think more and more people are making that first move to like ask someone out. And why not these other milestones like I love you or proposing marriage, like especially marriage, like this is a huge part of your life. Like why would you passively wait for something like that? So、exactly. I, yeah, I think it's all about taking control. Taking control, and you do you, boo. You do you. In the words of Tuan Lam, <laughs> I'll give him credit for that. But this is,、uh, you know, what I'm going to offer this up because I just thought of it. And I think it's brilliant. If anybody's going to have a Zoom wedding and you like for dateable podcasts to officiate,、um, I'm ordained from the、oh, Universal、right. Life Church online. Uh, Universal Life Church ULC dot org. Okay, it, it's it's legit. It's so, so legit. You can't like- even remember it. 
<laughs> I have a certificate and all. So if anybody wants to be the first wedding to oh be officiated、God. by the Dateable Podcast, I'm totally down. We are totally down to. That's a beautiful that. offer,、yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and it would be live recorded, so you could have it forever. We won't even charge you for like the videography <laughs> fee. <laughs> yeah, it'd be free. <laughs> <laughs> If you want a cheap ass amazing wedding, this is the route. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren, for telling us your lovely story, and I really hope that. Well, I don't even hope. I know you're gonna get that wedding that you wanted, and this is just the beginning of your life together. Yeah,、and、this is like the most <laughs> memorable way to start it. I know. <laughs> One last offering: if anyone does take us up on this vi-、uh, Zoom wedding, we can even have your proposal be in Sedona with a virtual background. Yes, you can. <laughs> Doe Mountain Summit is where it's at, and you don't even have to hike. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, we'll be in a vortex somewhere. You can just choose a vortex. We'll get、Perfect. you there. Perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lauren, for coming on. This it's so nice to like hear this story because I I think there is like something about just hearing that other people are doing it, hearing the reactions are positive. Like I think that does give permission for more more and more people to start making this a norm. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having me. I hope that we can、uh, at least get six percent of people proposing to their male spouses.、Um, <laughs> I, I, I really, I'm really excited about the future of just love and relationships. What you guys are doing with Datable is awesome, and I hope that this really sparks a lot of really great conversations with some couples who are ready to take it to the next level. Aww, and if anyone out there has done a joint proposal, I want to hear. About that, because that's I think is super interesting too. Hell yeah, we're gonna put that on our trends <laughs> list. Sweet. All right, well we're, we're gonna wrap this up. Stay, Stay dateable. dateable. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic. Media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag #StayDateable and trust us, we look at all those posts. Then head over to our website datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable.